Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. Today's film we'll be reviewing is the Mexican independent film Miss Bala, co-written and directed by Gerardo Naranjo. We are shooting here at East of 8th on West 23rd Street near 8th Avenue in the heart of Chelsea, a contemporary bar and restaurant whose culinary creations are also inspired by all of the cultures here. While primarily residential, it is a neighborhood that truly reflects the ethnic and social diversity of the city. You'll find the Chelsea Arts District only a few blocks away, while the infamous Hotel Chelsea, where such luminaries as Mark Twain, Tennessee Williams, and Thomas Wolfe resided, is just down the street. And East of 8th, with its stylish decor and tempting palettes, will capture your imagination. Let's go inside or upstairs and indulge ourselves a little. So hey everyone, I'm here with Mickey Fellman. He is the owner of East of Eighth. So tell me something, Mickey. How long has this uh, establishment been open? Uh, we opened in 1997, so we're here about 15 years. And what inspired you to open up this restaurant? Well, I've been in the restaurant business for th over 30 years, and we lost the restaurant to the landlord. It's now a CVS pharmacy up on the east side, and we oh. were looking for a new location. And here we are, right next door to the Chelsea Cinema. Oh, okay, great. Couldn't have asked for a better location. Garden in the back, two, two bars. Now, I noticed, we jumped at it. I noticed that you have a lot of artwork around and that underneath the artwork you have stickers. So I'm assuming that people could purchase the artwork Abs on your wall? Absolutely. As the sign over there says, it's for sale by the artist. We don't take a commission. It's, oh. I'm, a, I'm a patron of the arts. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the decor in here? It's very warm lighting, comfortable mm -hmm. seating, quiet music. Well, to some degree, we went with the space that we got. Mm. You know, in Manhattan, you can think of all sorts of different things, but when you get a location, you have to work within the location's limitations or non-limitations. You know, we have a beautiful garden in the back, so we play that up a lot. Yeah. It's open year-round. Uh, up here, it's an old brownstone, so we went with the old brownstone field. Okay. Yeah. And, and what we about downstairs in the bar area? Downstairs in the bar area, this sort of evolved. It's a tiny little bar, but it's, it rocks. Okay. <laughs> it rocks. We are busy at the bar. So can you tell me a little bit about the kinds of food that you have on your menu? Uh, it's an eclectic American menu. We like to think of it uh, like New York. Okay. You know, we think of our menu as that we serve what New Yorkers like to eat, everything from uh, pate to satay. You know, we have matzo bowl soup, we have pastas, we have steaks and chops, fish, fresh fish every day. We mm -hmm. bake our own breads, uh, make our own desserts. Everything is homemade here. Oh, wow. So what would you recommend for us to enjoy on your menu? Well, uh, tonight we are having our paella fest, which is absolutely a great deal and a delicious dinner. Mm -hmm. We have either uh, seafood paella or paella valenciana which has chicken and chorizo sausage in it. Ooh. Those are both very uh, flavorful dishes. They come with soup or salad, dessert, and a glass of sangria Ooh. for 19.95. Oh wow, that sounds like a wonderful yes. combination. That's our Monday night deal. Now for <laughs> folks who don't necessarily drink alcohol, what can they swap with? Um, they can have a soda or a juice. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, then. Well, thank you so much. I know you're mm -hmm. super busy in here tonight, so we just want to make sure that you get back to everything you have to do. Thank you so much. Okay, and well, we thank you for coming here. Well, thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. We shall indulge in some of the delicious paella in just a few moments. But okay. now, let's meet our panelists. To our far left, I have Tanika Gudo. Hello. Next to her, we have Annie Yen. And rounding out our panel, we have Renali Diaz. Hi. Today's film we'll be discussing is written by, co-written and directed by Gerardo Naranjo, the Mexican independent film, Miss Bala. The film Miss Bala, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty intense film. Um, did you think that this film reflect the current realities of, of drug traffic, excuse me, drug trafficking in Mexico? I think it was a very realistic portrayal of what appears to be happening on the border and just beyond the border in Mexico. I mean, we hear stuff on the news 
more frequently now than in the past, but I grew up in Southern California and uh, my parents live near San Diego, so being closer to the border, this has always been a reality, hearing these types of stories and understanding that drug trafficking happens between Mexico and the United States, and unfortunately there are innocent people who get involved um, in, in these situations. Um, I definitely liked the film, and it did portray reality, as uh, Tanika said, but I kind of felt that it could have worked better as a documentary. Mm. It worked, it started working off well for me and uh, I could relate to the character as she started off, but somewhere in the middle it, it got too, too docudrama-ish and I kind of tuned out in some parts. Mm. So I felt like it didn't really follow the path of a regular feature film and it got too, too much like a typical Hollywood action thriller in between. Mm. I felt like uh, the director is amazing with what he's done. The cinematography is beautiful. So uh, it worked for me in parts and didn't work for me in other parts. Okay. Um, it seems realistic to me, but then of course I'm not in Mexico experiencing all this. And there were moments in the film where I kind of questioned exactly really how realistic a certain character acted really calm during certain moments. So I kind of wonder about those moments. So, I mean, the Mexican drug war um, is kind of, when you look over the scope of the nation, it's pretty poorly covered in American media. Having viewed this film, um, I know you grew up in Southern California, so you're pretty aware and knowledgeable. Me, growing up in the East Coast, I don't really get this information as much. Um, has this film heightened your awareness about the drug wars, or do you feel that you had an awareness prior to this film? This is for everyone. Uh, I'm pretty new to the country, so um, I was kind of aware of it after I got here, but still at a very superficial level. After I saw the movie, I read up a lot about what is actually going on, and apparently 47,000 people have been killed. Mm -hmm. It is almost like a civil war, and that, that's really, that was a shocking piece of news to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, yes, I was somewhat aware of it, but of course, reading in the newspaper is still nothing compared to seeing it visually, where you really feel like you're experiencing the car you know, the everyday people's lives and stuff. In some ways, I also appreciate that she approached it in sort of a very detached kind of way, because I'm really sick of seeing these female victims portrayed in a different way, where they're screaming and overreacting. I'm sure there's a whole range of human emotions and it's kind of nice in some ways to see her taking this situation in such a cool, in some ways in a very cool approach. To yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I know, again, that you grew up in Southern California. Well, I was going to say, even for those who didn't grow up on border states like mm -hmm. Arizona or New Mexico or California or Texas, um, there have been other films that have highlighted this in more of a mainstream dynamic like Maria Full of Grace comes to mind and we have heard stories about human trafficking and how you know young women are being used as mules in the drug wars and with all the border talk especially with the upcoming elections um, this is some of the, the things that they discuss is how to secure our borders from drug traffickers and the human trafficking that's involved in those situations and the kidnappings that are involved in those situations so it Though some people are not aware, I feel like you can be aware. It's of it's course. it's out there. It's just. But, but when you say it's out there, you mean the information. The information the is out there. Okay. Um, and whatever source of media you choose to, you know, divulge in, you can get that information. But like you said, it's different to see it than yeah, read to it. read it or hear it on the news blurb. Or overall, with this film. How were you able to connect with some of the characters, and who were some of the characters you connected with the most? I know we all discussed having a little bit of trouble understanding Laura in certain circumstances, but were there characters in this film that you really like? You got them. I think the uh, the gang leader was pretty clear in whatever he wanted, and he was going after one thing. So he was a pretty clear character. Um, in some ways, I probably connect with the main character maybe more than my, the other two reviewers because I, I felt the film gave a very full portrayal of the character. 
um, she felt responsible for the family. Um, she was willing to sacrifice for the family too. Uh, the director of the pageant for Miss Baja, Louisa. yeah, Louisa. Yeah. Once again, it's another woman who had to like bend, yeah, in order to accommodate the overall situation. Very interesting choice of words too. May I? <laughs> So what were your thoughts on the editing and pacing of this film and, and or the cinematography? Oh yeah, that's a good point that you brought up. The pacing I thought started off really well. There was enough time to connect to everybody on screen and digest the information. And then I think about 40 minutes into the film it just got so fast, mm. almost like the genre changed. And, and since it's a foreign language film, I'm, I'm not able to, I'm, I'm reading everything that's going on and I'm, I'm not able to focus on what's happening on screen. So. I got a little lost midway through the film, so yeah, that, that was my take on it. I really appreciated those long, lingering moments because I feel like in life, there's a lot of those moments where there's a lot of uncertainty and just waiting and wondering. And yeah, I appreciate some of the, I'm so used to all the quick editing and I yeah. love those long ones. I think I agree yeah. with the pacing, I didn't, I appreciated that it, mm -hmm. it lulled at times because like you said, that's life. And then the times where it did pick up, I felt like that's the surprise of life. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, something unexpected happens that you just weren't anticipating. So that, mm -hmm. I, I understood. I understood how it was paced that way. I, it, that's why it didn't feel like a documentary to me once that part came in. But in the beginning, it did feel like more of a docudrama. So maybe it did switch genres, but I didn't think it was a, a necessarily a bad thing. During the pageant, the stage was white. The subtitles were also white. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't always help. And I, I noticed this seems to happen, like just a little drop shadow, turn the opacity, yeah. you know, just There just were a some times where, that, yeah, where that, that did happen. Yeah, that happened a lot of scenes, the white yeah. Yeah. That, that did happen. Um, to be honest with you, I can't even remember any of the music of the film, so did this film's lack of musical accompany, accompaniment add to its intensity? And did you even notice that there was little or no music? I did notice, and um, I think it's a good choice that he didn't use music. Yeah. It okay. makes it more real. Mm -hmm. It would have been more cinematic if, it, if music had been there taking the reality away from it so that was a good choice. Totally agree. I agree there didn't need to be music it felt more like a docudrama because of the lack of music the sounds around her constantly like in whether she was inside or, yes. or exterior added to the reality of her existence and her life and things that she was experiencing. I'm really tired of Hollywood overusing <laughs> yeah. the soundtracks music. and the yeah. I feel like when people put music in films, they're using it to try and guide my emotion or you know, kind of mess with mm -hmm. my mind as to what I should be thinking, what I should be feeling. But to not have music definitely allows me to get more involved with the characters and just have more of a connection and experience to what's going on. Absolutely. And also sometimes I feel like music uh, helps to build some kind of relief and with this film, I felt like there was no relief, and that was very necessary for this story. I don't want to be told how to feel about any story. I, I, I wish more directors in Hollywood uh, as well would allow you to experience the way you want to experience. But then, then it could have used a nice Neil Diamond song. <laughs> really? You think so? Indeed. No Diamond? <laughs> Which one would have worked? <laughs> Anything. No Diamond works for every film. <laughs> We'll let him, we'll write to him, let him know that yeah. he has a fan over here. Would um, you have gone to see this film if you were not on this panel? Um, oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Annie, you laughed. <laughs> Would you have gone to see this film? No, I, I rarely pay, I'm rarely willing to pay for these movie tickets. And then my friend gets to see, a, go to a live free screening, so. Oh, okay. I go with her a lot. So okay, yeah. so you've got the hookup. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I might have waited for a while for it to come on DVD or Netflix or something. I wasn't aware of this film, uh, unfortunately. Um, so I probably would not have seen it intentionally. It probably yeah. would have been something that caught my radar later on. Um, but I'm glad that it did. So ladies, I want to once again thank you for taking part in this conversation and you know spending your time with me this afternoon to share your thoughts on the film Miss Bala. Oh, really appreciate you. it. I want to just say thank you to Mickey Feldman for allowing us to shoot here in East of Eighth. 
This has been another episode of Let's Talk Film. Today's film we were discussing is um, Gerardo Naranjo's uh, independent Mexican film, uh, Miss Bala. Check out this episode and more at our website, www.letstalkfilm.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Stephanie Aline. Keep watching and keep talking film. Thank mm-hmm. you.